Dave Newfer is a friend and uh, acquaintance of ours for some time. He's, a, he's been a reader since 1975. He's involved, been involved in a number of uh, Urantia Association, Urantia uh, meetings. Uh, he's attended a seminar here, a seminar on the soul held in this building uh, within the past year, I think. I think so. On the soul. Uh, on the soul. Was it a year ago, November? Uh, uh, year. He's attended a, a number of our mini conferences that we hold in our home uh, one uh, twice a year. So he's gotten to be a good friend. And he's been very much interested in the science in the book. And that's what brings him to this conference. And, and I know he's been looking out for scientific developments that are, uh, what should I say, are consistent with teachings of the book. And uh, so uh, he has a, a, a very good reason for being here. He's truly scientifically oriented. So with that. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. And uh, <clears throat> I'm glad you're, you're my friend. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I, do, I do enjoy science. Um, I've been interested in, like since I was a kid, I really like to um, look at reference books and almanacs. My dad would buy me the um, World Almanac every year uh, for Christmas. It was just when it was coming out new. I mean, nothing really changed that much, but I still like to get that. Even the smell of the book was amazing. And uh, the first major purchase I ever bought was a uh, a set of Encyclopedia Britannicas. Once I had a paycheck, there was an encyclopedia salesman that came to the house. And I said, I want that. You wow. Know? And I still have it. You know? I just re-put it onto a, um, into my bookshelves. Um, so I've been interested in science. Like Ralph said, in 1975, I found the Urantia book in a uh, base library in San Diego, California. And um, it, uh, I opened it up to some pages, and it was just amazing to me that so much was in this book, and it just seemed like it was, it was plausible, that it was real. Um, so uh, I've been, like many of us, you know, I've been reading the book ever since, and the more, the more I read it, the more I want to know. And uh, at some point, I, I, I learned that if you do like one thing a day, by the end of the year, you'll have like 300 things. So I was, how do I apply that to, um, to the Arantia, uh work and to learning about the book? So um, it occurred to me that I could make charts that are in the book. Uh, in the Urantia book, there are over 300 lists where it just, they're just numbered lists and they're actually charts but sometimes uh, sometimes a chart could be made from information that's in different parts of the book uh, so as you see I've um, assembled a, a set of charts for what I call the Master Universe Almanac which is uh, which could be found at masteruniverse.org, and uh, the little motto of the of the publication is charting the Arantia papers. Um, so the, the almanac actually has two sections. One is the Arantia papers themselves, and um, so I have a version of the Arantia book from the foundation that I I put here so that it could be referenced from the almanac. So, um, and I, I, I found that uh, there are charts like this all through the book, from paper one all the way to, to the uh, to part four. Uh, so let's just uh, take a look at the uh, ones on deity. This is the first, uh, the first chart in the book, which refers to a... Um, Let's see, I have to learn how to navigate. Just do, you should finger in the lock. Can you do it? Um, Oops. Oops. Sorry. Oops. Hold on, not that one. Not that one. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, 
Down below. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, all you gotta do is oh, two fingers. Two you fingers? just move it. There we go. And there you go. <laughs> and how do you make that go away? Here we go. I got it. Just click, I click got somewhere it. else yeah. and it'll go away. All right, so this is one that has the names of the Universal Father, which is all the ones that are contained in this section called the Father's Name. Although it's not all of the names for the Father throughout the entire book. Um, and uh, so let's look at the, uh, what a chart is made of. It first has a name. That's like an editorial decision that would have to be applied to any of the charts. And I've tried to use the words that are this, you know, the words from the book. Um, also, then you have the information, the data. I tried to include a little uh, clip, a quote from around the area where the information came from. And maybe the most important part um, is the reference. Because um, Part of the reason for the almanac will be to get people to be interested, to let, let them look through these scrolls of charts, and when they, something strikes their interest, they could just click on where it came from, and then they can analyze it in uh, more detail and context. Um, it doesn't really link, except for a list of outside links, it doesn't link to anything outside of the um, that's how the Rancho book. It's it's like a they they play with each other. It's the almanac and the Rancho book working together. Um, so that people can uh, can learn. It's, um, so we did we did the uh, designations for the eternal son, the titles for the infinite spirit, and. Uh, Sometimes the charts would come straight from the book, just one, two, three, four, uh, whatever it is that they said, but sometimes it was a collection of things from different parts, um, an assembly of information. That's why I felt justified to do this by the first page here. At the bottom of that, I put a quote from the book. There we go. It says, there is an artistry in the intelligent assembly and coordination of related data. So, um, and that's really what I like. I like, uh, I like data, I like finding out things. And uh, I think a lot of people find it helpful too. I mean, it, was, it started out, it didn't look quite disorganized. It, I had a bad sense of what it should look like. It was like a black screen, had fluorescent text, and uh, it looked like it could be for a, uh, like a gaming site or something mm -hmm. like that, but uh, eventually it wised up and made it more readable. And uh, part of the reason I made a big change was um, all of the links, like I said, it references back to the, uh, to the Urantia papers, but I referenced to the foundations uh, set of the Arantia papers that were online, but they, they made a big change on their own website, so my links failed, you know, and so I, I had to do all these links again, and I thought, well, I better not do it from an outside site, so I, I decided I should just put the, uh, put the book on the same site, that way, if anything changes, it'll be because I, I had to change it myself. So, um, let's see. So we have the, uh, the, the various um, work, like uh, let's go to the personalities. Um, whenever there's related data that they would talk about, um, like the master spirits, we know that they're numbered, we know who they're in likeness of, and we know which super universe they preside over. Um, I uh, also included a quote from 
a quote about the master sphere. It's just something that il illustrates a little better so that if you're just quickly going through to see if you find something interesting, uh, you'll get an idea of what the chart is talking about. Um, yeah, if anybody sees anything that they want me to stop at, I'll be glad to do that. But we, with the personalities, they usually would tell you uh, about the name of the personality, the number um, that there are in uh, the locality. And uh, sometimes this one tells the domain where they work, and sometimes it'll tell the origin. Um, and you, can, you all can look at this. It's masteruniverse.org. You can look at this uh, at your leisure when, when you can or when you want to. Um, so this, is, this tells about the, uh, the different charts in the book. And uh, there's a couple of other things. That, that's the chart. So I made this part called the compendia. And I'll click on that. And you see this is the Arantia book list of lists. This is uh, 376 numbered lists that are found in the book. Um, you can just scan through it. And <coughs> if you see something that's interesting, you just click on the link. And it will go to seven orders. Uh oh. Oh, we can go right back. Back button. Seven orders. Where it says where it is. Where it is. It's about the seraphim. Wait a minute. Trinity embrace sun. Seven working yeah. groups of secondary sopranophone. Down toward the bottom is 26, yeah, uh, 4, 2. Yeah, about five, six up from the bottom. Yeah. Is it this one? No. no. Keep going down. Down there. 26, 4, 2. Uh, one, one more. more. What, uh, they, uh, there we go. That there one. Go. go to that one. All right. Let's see that one. Okay. Okay. That is so cool. So it gets you to the general location. I put this at the top of, of the uh, papers, just so people know where what paper they're in. Um, so it gets you close to where the uh, reference is from. And that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Some kind. Mm -hmm. Compliments of rest. Well, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we always get a lot of questions in our study group, and you know, I like, wonder if we should have this uh, link up all the time. Mm -hmm. It seems like you can find things pretty quick. Yeah, we, we were talking earlier about some topic, and uh, I went to here. Well, I'll show you that part. Um, so we'll go back to the list. And I want you to know that this, this list was not put together by me. I mean, I made the links and everything, but uh, a guy named Archer Ford. I don't know if any of you uh, have heard of him. I think he lives in maybe Montana. And uh, simultaneous to me putting together the almanac, he was putting together this list. And uh, he, he published it. It wasn't linked or anything. And I just asked him, can I uh, put this into my uh, reference that I'm making? And uh, he said, oh, yeah, sure. You know, so he was glad to see it being used. And uh, I was glad to have it here because it's, it's pretty fast, fascinating to see it all. This is the things that the, the presenters of the book really wanted us to uh, see in that numbered list form. So I really thank Archer Ford for... Um, letting me use this. And you, you split these up by parts of the book. I, see. I yeah, that's, that's they're all once continuous. So. Yeah, that's oh, how that's how um, that's how most of the almanac is put together oh, and is separated by parts. Right. Um, okay, and this one is the presenters. Uh, it also includes like acknowledgments and annotations that are not part of the narrative, but they're very interesting to read on their own. 
And uh, the, main, the main thing people would be interested in is just seeing how the presenter's name is listed all together in a row. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of helpful to to see it in this this format. And I wonder why they have so many different names for you know, you know how they describe themselves sponsored by, presented by, you know, uh, indicted by, uh -huh. right? Uh, you know, right. Dictated by. Mm -hmm. Dictated by. Dictated. Dictated. But what is it with? The you know, without name and number. What is it about that one? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Well, they're, they're mortals. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. They're, they're special. They're mortals. very special. <laughs> Even more special than Mighty Messengers, uh, I think. Yeah. That's the reason they're without name or number. They're not, you know, they're so special you can't even name one of them. It says they're above name and number. So that was actually one of the first things that I, I put together because I just wanted to see it for myself, you know, how that, that actually would work. Well, in, in honor of Nigel, let's go to Ultima Time. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's, the next, uh, oh, okay. that's the next type of thing. That I, right. This, now, this is, um, these are searches. So where is Ultima Time? Right there. Oh, right there. Okay, here we go. So every reference to ultimate time is in this list. And uh, that's really what I want to mainly get across, is that there's a really great search engine that's, um, that was made by Art, not by Archer Ford, but um, Bishop... Um, Troy, Troy, Bishop. Bishop. Troy, Bishop. Troy Bishop. Yeah, he put together this uh, search engine, which I'll, I'll go to in a second, but this is the result. Um, Ultimate Times had, let's see, at the bottom I usually put how many times it was. So that occurred 36 times. But if I had put something like faith or <laughs> God, you know, there would be hundreds. Yeah. And uh, so for Ultimate Time, that was good. I could. That's a handleable number. Um, and it's interesting to see it put together because this search engine not only shows the, um, the references in the paragraphs, but it puts them in order from the beginning of the book to the end. And it's, you can learn a whole lot by doing that. Um, like sleeping survivors, mm -hmm. to see them put together like that, you really learn about that particular topic. Um, so there, these are just a few examples, but there's an almost an infinite amount of things that you could look up, words that you could put together. So like I want to do second cutting, I want to do that. Okay, that's what I'll do. Um, we'll go back to the front page. Just click on Master Universe Almanac and it'll take you to the uh, contents page. And then I have some links at the bottom here. Uh, the first one is Search the Papers. The second one is 1913 Dictionary, which is a very helpful thing if you want to know exactly what the uh, words in the papers meant. Now, 1913 is a little distant from you know, 19, it's, but it's close enough, I think. And you could also, not, I, I bought a 1936 dictionary, it's a little beyond, but uh, if you really want to study the book, you almost have to check out what these original, what these words originally meant. So we'll look at the search the papers here. This takes you off site to um, Troy Bishop's uh, search site. It usually takes a little while to load because you're loading a lot of stuff. And his, his, his search site is divided. If you know the paper section paragraph, you could just put it in here. You could find the paper by going down here to the papers. 
but the main search is going to be done here. So what was the one you said? Second coming. Second, second coming. Okay, we'll see if that shows up. Okay, I'm not typing the right letters. It's a Mac. They have different keyboards. S E C O N D O N I N G. Now that will give you the exact phrase "second coming." Okay, it does have what is that? Ten occurrences. So that's. I think they really put together the book with these phrases in mind, knowing that we would have search engines. That's my speculation, but. I agree. Uh, they, the, the, the way they always use the same words for the same topics almost has to mean that they really intended us to use something like this. And, and like you said, when you focus on just one word or one phrase, you get a, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but you, you get new insights. Into the meaning of that particular concept. Yeah, I think I think that's exactly right. It's almost like a little study guide for that topic, and you could you could just spend the day looking at this this thing and taking it in and trying to see what the phrase how it was used throughout throughout the book. And, and many times you'll see a definite progression as you go through the book. On that particular where it starts out more simple, like it's an explanatory, and then it gets possibly more complex as it goes on. Is, is this an app or uh, a website? The search? Yeah, your whole chart program here. Oh, the, the chart program is a website. It's okay. called masteruniverse.org. Okay. And this is a separate website. Yeah, Troy's. Troy's website okay. that has... And, I thought I would really love to have this right on my Almanac site. And I, I, I think I might have asked Joanne or somebody, and uh, he said, I don't, I don't see why you would not want to do that. You know, it's just so much more work, and it's already there, and it works perfectly. You know, so, uh, but I can almost consider it to be part of the Almanac or part of that group of reference types, type of works. So yeah, I would really recommend if you have an interest and know a phrase that you want to look up or maybe an unusual word, you're going to be able to um, get a lot, like like Ralph said, you'll get some good insight by doing it this way. And, and many, many times you'll get the definition. Yeah, yeah. And that, um, does, do, does anyone know if there's like a, a site that has definitions directly from the book, or at least just slightly modified? There, there's some limited ones, uh, not, not comprehensive, not, you know, they're abridged. Okay. But uh, I thought for a long time some of them were unabridged dictionary, just based on the wrenchy book, exactly what it says about terms, the way it defines that. Yeah. And it seems to me that might be useful for the translators. But it's a huge show. Yeah, it would be real helpful. Yes, Joanne? Uh, there's a keyword index. Would that be similar to what you're thinking? Uh, uh, yeah. Let me go uh, grab one. I have one in my office. Are, they, uh, are the definitions taken right, like this quotes from the book? Yeah, I think they're, so. They're, they're pretty close to it. Is it maybe I don't know, 30 pages, or is it bigger than that? I think we have that on the foundation site, maybe on Truth Book as well. Yeah, I want to link to it, that. It covers maybe a hundred words or something like that. It's it, it's very limited, but it does cover the common ones. I'll look that up. I wonder if there's a way to like link that with Google searches. Like if I searched Google, I know they know who I am and that I like the Urantia book. They know everything about me, Google. But um, so they know I'm into your answer. So if I search for adjuster, they're not going to give me some insurance agent. They're going to give me some, you know, some, uh, something more relevant to what I'm looking for. Um, okay, so yeah, that's that's the search. That is very helpful. Uh, some of like the twelve apostles. That's more of a spreadsheet. But I noticed when I was reading the book that they told certain pieces of information about each of these men. And um, uh, so I, I gathered them together. 
I like the paper yeah. Trade of Jesus when you got that. That's great. Because they all like something different. Mm -hmm. Except the obvious twins. They like yeah. the same thing. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that that was that was fun to do. And uh, I also, I, think, I started in a chronology which I haven't quite finished, and I tried to put it in the present tense. Um, and I'd like to just, I, I really want to spend more time on. On that. Here's the one I was talking about. I don't know if this is something. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Mm. And then there's also this um, pronunciation guide to names and words, which I found very helpful in the beginning. Mm. Good. Oh, it's just one of those. Oh, that's the other one. Yeah. Oh, you got more of these already. Mm -hmm. Here. Uh, so this this chart is also um, I think helpful to to see the seven bestowals of Michael um, where he was bestowed at what what type of the um, and about the time frame. Now notice the time frame, I think you can see that's in green, uh, because if it was something that's directly from the book, I put it in black, but if it's something that even is slightly like editorial where it's my, it's not necessarily opinion, I think it's correct, but um, it's still not specifically stated in the book, so I, I put it in green and uh, uh, just, just to, I'd like to keep everything in the almanac true to the book, you know, mm -hmm. um, without too much of my own opinions or anything. It's, it's, it's a reference work, and I think that's how it should be. There's room for other kinds of works. People have, you know, their ideas and views of how the book relates to this and that. That's what we're here for. A lot of people have uh, secondary works. Um, that they put together, but I, I wanted this to be a, a, just a reference of what's in the book, and there's so much in the book, it's not even close to being finished. Um, hey, Dave? Yes. I'm not sure I really know, understand what the difference is between, a, I mean, I know there's a website and there's an app. Would there be any benefit to creating an app out of this? Uh, I'm trying to envision, you know, sitting in a study group and something comes up and you want to reference it and... Be yeah. faster on an app, or it would be better in a little technical, but it's HTML5 where you can have like an app version and a web version, and yeah, I think that would be that would be great, but um, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just asking, is there any benefit to having this as an app rather than just as a website? Did, was there a reason why you asked? Or? Well, oh. no. Their, their apps are great. Mm -hmm. We're doing an enhanced ebook soon from the Rancher Foundation. You rent your book with pronunciation guide and a whole series of other things in the ebook. Will it have like good navigation? That'll be, get to, uh, will it have good navigation where you can get to like the different papers easily? And yeah, and you'll be able to click on a reference in the index that will take you right to that spot in the book. Oh, nice. Things like that. Yeah, that's nice. Interactive index. Right, you, you should have that. That's yeah, it's kind of, it, it should maybe be by December or something. Hopefully, maybe right. not that quick, but soon. And we're still, the foundation's still very supportive of the audio files, right? The audio you can get our audio book at audible.com, which is the largest well, so we have, of we audio have, books. We have a blind member in our study group now. He's born blind. And he's now he's only he's only been reading for two years or listening I should say for two years. He's already listened all the way from the beginning of the book three times. Mm -hmm. Wow! Man. And he's like so so committed. He's a, he's a lovely young man. He's in his early forties. Uh, he's been blind since birth. He teaches at the Alabama School for Deaf and Blind, mm -hmm. and uh, he's part of our online study group now. Yeah. But he's so he would not have had access to the book if it were not for audio files. Yeah. 
I think you can get it on our site for mm -hmm. free, can't you? Yes, yeah. for free. Yeah. You do have to yeah. register. Yeah, you just register. It, yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. it's still free. Yeah. Or you can get them on audible.com and it goes right into your iPod or mm -hmm. whatever. Well, I found that audiobook is so, I mean, I, I have uh, somewhat of a dyslexia situation. And uh, so I don't have like good reading comprehension. It's probably why I like bits of information, you know, uh, that's, and it's gone way back. But hearing the book really improved my comprehension of what's in it. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. I, I do both. I, I try right. to read it. Well, I'm telling you, as, we, as, as our population ages, I mean, I'm serious because I'm having to do, use my eyes so much for school. So when I go to the Urantia book or I do pleasure, it's no longer reading for me. It, it's either got to be audible or it isn't happening because my, my eyes just can't take it anymore. I just well, can't for example, at audible.com, it's divided into three parts and they sell each part. But we sold a thousand downloads last year. And that's way up from just what it was a couple years ago. And that's with us giving it away for free as well on our website. So so that's people, yeah. I think yeah. that's going to be a huge thing. And for people that do have you know, issues with, with actually reading things, it's going to be tremendous. How about, can you tell us anything about how that was made? That was made a long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was and, um, Mike and Linda Snodgrass at an, an audio book company in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And they did it for us. We asked them if they'd do it, and they did it. Yeah, but one of and those, they did multiple voices, right. which one makes of those it really guys, interesting. One of those guys that's a reader is like seriously famous. Yeah, Stephen Zent from San Francisco there did the deep voice, the voice that sounds like God is Stephen Zent. Right. But the rest was just professional readers, and that company is now a part of Amazon, and their books are sold through audible.com. But you know, the guy that's faintly British, that sounds slightly British, he's like... I can't remember his name. He's like seriously famous. I mean, he's like a rock star of audio books. Yeah, well, the the company, that it was called Brilliance Audio. Yeah. And Brilliance had some of the best readers there are. To well, they're, they're great. Yeah. yeah. So that's the origin of that. Yeah. Um, have, have you done any audio from other languages? Or are you uh, Yeah, there's a Portuguese being done, there's a Spanish being done, and then there are various people have done their own language audios that are just kind of floating out there. A, a quick story, uh, Mike and Linda, I was interested in buying Brilliance Audio at one point. And they came out, Mike and Linda, to see me. And we were just talking about the book and they were in my house. And I had Journey Through the Universe, that, that poster, I don't know if you know the poster where you go from here to paradise. And I had the original hanging. And we're walking through the house and we're walking like this and Mike looks over and he keeps walking. Then he looks at me and he looks back. And he goes back and he goes, is that the arranger book? Yes. <laughs> wow. I said, yes, it is. <clears throat> he goes, Wow, I read the Arantia book. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a couple of years later, they did the recording. Yeah. Uh, it was a really it's funny moment. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's great. Wow. That's uh, what kind of serendipity yeah, is that? Yeah. 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 How many personalities were working on that? <laughs> yeah. Dave, do you have some maps on your site? Oh, I did have charts. Yes. Oh, chart. Yeah. Why side? I don't try to find those. What was that colorful one you just saw? Yeah. Charts. And I, I don't have a lot of charts. And uh, Did you create these? Or? I made this one. Oh, really? Um, yeah, it tells the uh, space levels, the Havona. Um, I've since learned that it's not quite an oval, it's more like two circles with that are connected, uh, more like, if I go down the page, more like this. Oh, mm -hmm. um, that's Bill Sadler's. This is Bill Sadler's um, chart, and I, I like to have, in fact, I would really like to get a, a collection of as many charts and graphs, graphics, uh, and put them all together in, in an organized form. 
so that people can choose which one seems to be the best one that is most closely related to um, how they see the text. How, how they, so, but then I s sort of did that with this. I put kind of a disclaimer at the bottom, or I try to explain why you have uh, two circles, and uh, it's basically two circles and a connection, a straightaway. So you have the, it's like a racetrack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how the, uh, it's described how the super universes go around the central universe. And it's, I think it's a description of how, of, uh, how paradise is, um, how it is, what the form of paradise is. So I have that as a, uh, plane of creation type of thing. This one is a vertical cross section that has uh, the space reservoirs. See that? Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, pervaded space, uh, the pervaded space levels, and the, how mid space interacts with them. There's more of a, since making this, I, I think there's more of a, um, a Maltese cross uh, shape that I could probably incorporate into this. You might see it better in Bill Sadler's version here. So those are those two. Um, this is again close up on paradise. That's the shape of paradise. It looks like a coin, a coin on its side, maybe like a um, uh, like a pound coin or a nickel, about that size, um, or a euro coin. Um, we have probably people all over the world size, so uh, universal. Um, but if you look at it on its side, that might be the east-west, if you're looking at paradise, mm -hmm. with a flat uh, periphery. And uh, it's on the next page. Oh, that's what I was trying to describe. That's the dimensions of a paradise, uh, how you would make paradise seven by six. And this is 10 across, which would give you the one tenth uh, para uh, paradise, peripheral paradise uh, dimension. And I don't know if I have, I don't think I have any. See, I don't have very many drawings. I would really like to have that would be a great project to take everything that can be drawn, try to put it together in a schematic form, um, so that everything's kind of related. You know that it all came from the same place, but even things like when they talk about one of the beings or a type of being that can receive this amount of information, and they they mention if a high speed tele Telegraph were to the, the output of that for a thousand years, um, so we could quantify that and say that how many Encyclopedia Britannicas is that in a minute? Because back then they didn't have computers, they didn't have things. They just wanted to say this is really a lot of information very fast. You know, so we can make pictures and drawings of how that would be. You know that film that. Uh did where he, you know, he lines all the dots up, you know, and, and he just keeps going out and out until, and then you see where your ranch is, oh. and then he goes all the way back, and he says, and then he does the quote about, but you're, is, you know, loved and is taken care of as if you were the only one. That is one of the most effective things. I've shown that to so many people. I, I mean, it's beautiful. If you haven't seen it, and you've all seen that one, it's amazing. This is another um, version of Bill Sadler's uh, chart. Uh, that tells us our place in the grand universe. You see we're in super universe seven. Um, Splandon, major sector five, minor sector three. Um, Nebadon, 84, is the local universe. Constellation 70, system 24, and planet 606. So that's kind of like our zip code. <laughs> you know, seven, five, three, um, 
how um, I call location relationships and it, it's re it uses more references than any of the others I think five different places in the book and um, it gives you exactly what the book says your answer revolves around its son we all know that um, and uh, all, all of them you could re reference and go back and check that this is exactly how it is. And if you read these all together, you'll get a pretty good idea of where Nevadon is and where we're located in the scheme of things. And uh, I could just recommend that you just end in this one here. <laughs> the Satania uh, Physical Systems. It occurred to me that if you want to find out the mass of the super universe level, you would just multiply seven. If, if Satania is a typical system, then there's a billion systems in Orban time, and seven times that for all of them. So you can take this mass, assume this mass is how much masses in the one system and then find out the approximate mass of the super universe from that because there's nothing else really besides systems except for the um, architectural spheres and that could also be calculated um, so um, I think that would be a good project for somebody that knows how to do that kind of thing um, that's a picture I like. It What's reminds that? me of the Master Force organizers <laughs> getting together. What's that called? The, the ant Is that nebula? the Eye of God? No, it's the Ant Nebula. Oh, the Ant Nebula. Yeah, yeah. Okay. See, it's a, yeah. it looks like an oh, ant's got right, a right. thorax. Right. Awesome. Yeah, it's called the Ant Nebula. Famous, famous picture. It's a beautiful yeah. picture. Yeah, it's a beautiful picture. Think of the beautiful pictures we're going to get when the Webb Telescope goes up. Oh, yeah. 10X uh, right. Can't wait. Yeah. It's another two years, what, October 2018 or something? Yeah. It's going to be great. Okay, well, I don't really have that much more. If anybody has any questions, uh -huh. I'm going to